Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. I was introduced uh, this weekend to a really interesting gentleman who's developed a patent um, on converting brain nerve data into computer format. And uh, he's built a company around it. I want to introduce you to Moshe Offer. He is the inventor behind this patent. Um, and it's it's using virtual reality, using our eyes only, and converting brain, eye, nerve data into commu- computer format, manipulating it, and then sending it back to the brain. Sounds Correct. unbelievably fascinating. And uh, Offer has been the CEO of a company by the name of Active Point since 2003 and of Acteve for the past three years. He has a master's in management from Boston University and a bachelor of science from the Open University in Israel. Throughout his career, he's worked in high-tech uh, companies such as Motorola, uh, Telrad, uh, Oliveta, Juliet Statcom, and several Israeli high-tech companies and in the field of software. He has worked his way up from being a programmer to team leader and a product manager to VP in marketing and now CEO. His motto, is innovation achieves goals, and this has always brought him success. He is also the inventor of the dark matter theory that states that all is created from one particle, the dark matter. Fascinating. Uh, Moshe Offer, welcome to the show. How are you, sir? Thank you very much, and how are you? Very well, thank you. So, you know, tell me, please, what is this patent and what does it do? Please explain it to us all. Well, very simply, our eye transmit images. I convert it into computer format. Then I can add colors. I can put cameras. I can do anything I want with it and then convert it back to the brain format. I look at the nerve as a communication line, just like the Wi-Fi or any wire. Uh, I look at it that way. And by uh, uh, an algorithm that uh, I look at what the eye sees and compare it one by one, I can uh, I deciphered how it works. Do I make it complicated for you? Yeah, I don't <laughs> understand. So what you're doing is you're 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 taking something that is in our imagination and turn it into a visual look. That's the third patent. I can take the imagination as well because the imagination sends pictures, images. And if they send images, I can translate it into computer format and, for example, transmit it to a a computer screen. Very simple. And and uh, uh, what I was trying to explain is how I... I decipher it, but I don't think it's very important. I think anybody who wants to do it can go back to the patent and see how it works. But that, that, that's the basic idea. And the basic idea is that you don't need a camera in order to see the world. You can see it with your eyes. I can manipulate the pictures and do anything with it. I can, for example, uh, um, manipulate for you to see a, a computer screen. And the computer screen will be just as much as you can see it in front of you now. So you don't need a computer screen. You don't need a keyboard because you can key in on the world and 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 and, and do the same thing. So so I I apologize. So I'm seeing a cockpit, you say in your patent or or in your description or a computer screen, but I don't need the computer screen to see it. So how am I seeing it? I'm, I'm you're connecting to my brain somehow to to make me see it. Since I am sending the data coming from the eye to the brain, I can put the picture of the screen on top of what you're seeing and then send it to the brain. The brain doesn't know that. How how are you sending it to the brain? Are you putting a wire into my brain? Well, the first patent is that uh, we will have to implant a little chip on your nerve. But then my partner said, well, do something better. So I managed to write it in such a way, a new patent, a CIP, that's a continuation in which I can put one picture on top of the other uh, without uh, connecting to the brain. I will need something on the eyes, but uh, a, a, a 
eyeglasses. But uh, other than that, I can send it to the brain because I can put one picture on top of the other. So we're going to put these these glasses on, um, what, sort of like 3D glasses or something like this, and all of a sudden we're going to be able to see a virtual world? Well, the idea is, I don't want to get to everything in the patent because it still is in the office, but basically I will be able to see the world and put the picture of the... Uh, uh, screen on top of it on the eye one after the other and then the computer will will bring them together that's in very simple words okay so in your right i'm trying to make everything very no, simple i appreciate as I that can. i appreciate that in your write up what you sent me says that you will create a button uh, a button less cockpit where all Correct. the instruments including displays will be virtual complex wiring displays and buttons will no longer be necessary explain if I was sitting here today, how would I see a buttonless cockpit? Well, if I can transmit to the brain anything from the computer, I can tr transmit, for example, a button. If I, <clears throat> if I have the button there, then I know the position and I can move my finger to the non-existent button and then the computer will appreciate it as pressing the button. And so I will then, I will sit in here, see myself in a in a cockpit, and I'll be able to see the instruments, and I'll be able to actually press the imaginary button that I see, and the computer will know that I pressed that button and will take action. Correct. Unbelievable. Uh, but that's only the beginning. And <laughs> <laughs> That's only the beginning because we can do it to any instrument, basically. And uh, following our sounds buttons, like the matrix. It is, but uh, I have the technology. The second patent, I can do the same thing with the ear. Why do I mention it now? Because it became public. It hasn't been approved yet, and we have all the signs that it's going to be approved. But it already is public. Unbelievable. This is a fascinating <laughs> conversation that we're having with uh, Moshe Offer tonight about, about his patent, about technology, about a company that he's building that will allow us to have a virtual buttonless cockpit and other things uh, that, uh, that he creates via either a chip or, or eyeglasses or something where he, can, he, he, he gives our brain the information that we require to see something in front of us that doesn't actually exist. It's a virtual world. Fascinating. We're going to take a break for some message and be back with Moshe Offer in just two minutes. Stay with us, everybody. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour on Saga 960. If uh, you've been following me for a while, you know I'm really interested in finding out about fascinating new technologies because there's so many people in this world that are working on really interesting things. And uh, my guest tonight is Moshe Offer, who uh, is a uh, an inventor and a, and a business person who uh, is the inventor behind a patent that is uh, converting brain nerve data into computer format. And he uses uh, virtual reality using our eyes only, uh, converting brain eye, brain eye nerve data into a computer format, manipulating it, and then sending it back to the brain. He uh, is CEO and has been CEO of a company by the name of Active Point uh, for the last uh, 20 years and also Activi for the last uh, three years. Uh, and um, looks like you're working on some really interesting uh, technology, sir. Uh, I've got a little bit of a background in, uh, in a medical device uh, company, by the way, that might uh, explain some of uh, our conversation, sir, that um, was really taking a look at the brain and the pupil in the brain as being the eye on the brain and that uh, the pupil in the brain pr creates an incredible amount of information going into the brain. Um, and actually the way that the pupil moves can determine a lot of what's going on in the brain. Tell me if you could, how your information goes, does it go straight to the brain or does it go through the eye to the brain? 
Well, in the basic patent, it goes from the nerve to the computer. And from the computer, of course, it can go to the internet or anywhere else. The computer then manipulates it. It can add pictures. It can change it into a camera. You can uh, change it into uh, looking into whatever your smartphone seeing it, then converts it back to the brain format, the way the brain gets the information from the nerve, send it back to the brain. That's that's what it does. Which which nerve, sir? The eye nerve. The eye nerve. So it's it's it is it bypassing the eye or is it going? No. The nerve comes from the eye. I tap on the nerve, and there are about a hundred companies that do it in different ways. Take the information that passes through there, convert the format into computer format, do whatever I want to do with the computer, like change the colors, uh, add a picture of Mickey Mouse, for example, and then convert it back to the uh, brain format, go back to the nerve, and from the nerve, uh, it goes to the brain. It's it just like any other wiring. If you have a wiring, uh, uh, of a computer, you cut it in the middle, they're just metaphorically cutting it. You bring the data into the computer, you do whatever you want, you bring it back and the other side sees the two things together. This is fascinating. So what you described in what you wrote me is that you've got this um, advantage of zero installations, for an example, in the work of uh, cockpit instruments. Uh, you've got no need for long winding wires, hardly any instrumentation, instrumentation pollution when the plane is scrapped. You could add new features to the cockpit that, that would no longer require working on hundreds of thousands of different cockpits. Cockpit maintenance will be nearly zero and installation time almost non-existent. The failure rate also near zero. All we would need is a Wi-Fi cable connection to the aircraft computer. The pilot will not actually have to navigate from the cockpit. So... And what I understanding is that you could put me right now in my my home office. You could put me into a virtual cockpit of a plane and I could navigate this plane, fly the plane. The plane could actually fly. I could press all the buttons, press the dials, move all the uh, the machinery. And I wouldn't well, actually be in the plane. That is correct. But there is one caveat here you will still have to see outside the cockpit, the world. And that's the reason why at the moment you will still have to sit there. If for any technology would be that the data from the windows of the cockpit come to you, then you can fly it without being in the cockpit. Do everything from your home. So this Whenever, really is the uh, matrix. It is. It's even more interesting. The third patent with the same technology will be able to display your imagination on a screen. We will be able to manipulate the, the, the imagination and send it back to the brain. So I could imagine where I am and you could recreate that in this virtual world and send it back to me? Yeah, I, for example, if uh, the background is really nasty one and you're seeing a horrible things in your imagination, I can paint it in nicer colors and send it back to the brain and you will be much happier. See, That's a very simple example. Seeing this terrible horror uh, uh, show uh, in, my, in my brain, makes it makes nightmares even more real. <laughs> in a way, but uh, uh, what it brings us eventually, and I don't want to go too far here, is that if we can see the imagination and we know the, our imagination controls us, we'll be able to better understand how the brain works. And if we understand better how the brain works, we can manipulate it to do better things. Tell me a little bit about uh, your company and where you are in this development and, uh, and, and where you think it's going to be going. 
At the moment, every, uh, like everything else, it starts with a patent, with an idea, with a drawing board. Our next step is to realize the patents. And we are very happy to tell it to the world because we're looking for large partners with deep pockets in order to uh, realize the patents. The patent itself is software. So developing the software is only one part of the whole machinery. Uh, so we, we, we're looking to, to go ahead and we are looking for partners to do it. And we are talking to some people, some very large companies. These are medical device companies or uh, technology companies or, or what? Technology companies. We will have to have partners in the bio world. We'll have to have people in the electronics. And we'll have to have software people. And if we want to go even further, we'll have to have psychologists and people who understand in um, self-hypnosis and things like that. We know a lot about it, how to change our attitudes by changing things in the imagination, even without those, uh, without this uh, invention. Hold on. I don't understand. I apologize. So you've gone from creating this virtual world um, that uh, effectively you can communicate and and, uh, and and send to my brain. And now you're talking about self-hypnosis. What's the connection to self-hypnosis? And self hypnosis imagination. You, imagination you can change your imagination you can you, you can manipulate it you can you can bring in different pictures like you're in a bad mood you imagine nice things that is how we do it today we'll be able to eventually and that's the idea going forward to be able to really manipulate it physically not just imagine it and change the imagination am i making sense or you lost me no it's interesting so what you're saying is that i can imagine myself if i'm in a bad mood i can imagine myself in a far nicer place but then you can actually take that thought and recreate it in a virtual environment to make that imagine that wonderful imaginary place even more real and i will look at it and believe i'm actually in that beautiful imaginary place is that correct correct and this is how the brain works actually and uh how will we know not... the difference between what's real and what's this computer generated uh, imaginary world well how does your brain know the difference between imagination and what comes from the eye we don't know yet but it does because you go now into your other room and imagine going to a beautiful island your brain knows that you're imagining you're looking at me you know that you're looking at me you know that our brain knows how to differentiate mostly but if Unless i close have... my eyes and imagine a beautiful island and walking on the beach of a beautiful island and then you take that information and somehow you turn it around such that I actually think and i can actually go and i can press a I guess a button uh, to call a waiter or something like that at the bar at this beautiful island and the waiter actually comes and serves me a drink. Is it the fact that I can't actually hold that drink? No, of course not. If it's in your imagination, you can do everything. You can drink a glass of wine in your imagination, but it still is in your imagination. I think I went a bit too far. Am I correct? I was told, don't go that far because you're going to confuse people. But eventually, the idea is to be able to look at our imagination. And that's very important. It's going to be a revolution, a real revolution. It sounds like it is. I understand that um, that there was some uh, negative things that happened in your life that uh, was the catalyst to creating this uh, this idea. Is that true? That is correct. I had three brain operations, two physical and one uh, with radio surgery. And I saw on the highway how the brain, that's how I discovered it, can complete pictures without the eyes real seeing it. And that started giving me the ideas. 
that the brain can take parts and create a whole picture. So and you said uh, you saw on the highway. Yeah, that was in Italy, actually. I was driving and I saw the signs, the road signs, and I couldn't see them. And all of a sudden I saw them, but the eye couldn't see the whole picture. The, the eye just rebuilt the picture from parts. Uh, again, I'm not making sense. <laughs> if parts are missing in your eyesight, your brain can can complete it. I saw, I I I I experienced it. Your, Nobody your else can, can do it. Your brain can fill in some gaps. Correct, that is the right word. I'm not always the best in description. That's interesting. That's fascinating. And so, because of these these operations, these tumors that you had. Uh, and this experience on the highway, what you you came to this conclusion that you could actually do what? That uh, I can create a picture from parts, uh, just just take parts of the picture, and complete it into a full picture. So that and the information that comes from the eye is actually more manipulated by the brain to create a to fill in gaps, as you've talked about, and to make a a uh, a more realistic view of what it is that you either thought you were seeing or want to see. That's that's interesting. Yes, I. Uh, it'll take me longer to explain everything in details, but the CIP, the continuation patent, relies on these ideas, and pretty soon I will be able to talk about it more. Okay, so you've got the patents. Um, have you actually developed the technology? No. I will develop the technology. The software is the easiest part, actually, because uh, taking one protocol and converting it to another is the simple part of it, really. And I've written exactly how to do it. There is There are many ways to do it. And... Uh, Creating a whole system out of it will not be that easy, but uh, it can be done because people have the chips that can read the uh, the nerves and bring the data into the computer. Hmm. You've been involved in technology for a long period of time um, and high-tech startup companies. Have you been involved in things relative to the eye previous to this? No. So this Never. is your first uh, venture into the eye. Correct. And, Never uh, before. And you're in the process of raising money uh, via some of these strategic partners that uh, you say you're talking about so that you can actually create this technology. Correct. And your long-term goal would be to do what? To create the technology and go public or to sell it out to one of these technology companies or, 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 or both or either or what? Actually, both. It depends. Uh, life brings you opportunities that you haven't thought ahead from business point of view. So if somebody comes in and says, I want to buy everything, I'm not going to say no. But the idea is to go ahead and develop the infrastructure that then large aviation companies will be able to build the virtual cockpit or large computer companies will be able to build on top of this technology. So this technology is only an infrastructure that I can sell. It's like having a, 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 this, the smartphone, and I, uh, uh, I'm not showing it. Here is the smart, my smartphone. That is the basis. Then you have the operating system. Then you have apps. And then you can connect it to many things and do many things. That's the idea to do it. Tell me whenever I don't make sense. Is, is, this, is this idea, is this technology, is this patent, is it safe? Well, first of all, it is safer than a car, definitely. And I brought the uh, example that when they started with high-speed trains, they thought that women uteruses are going to fly out of the body. This is a real story. I haven't, 
Uh, I, it was uh, even in the big papers in the US. I can assure you, I went on a high speed train with my wife and she came out of, of there in one piece. So every technology people are afraid of. Cars are more dangerous than flying with your imagination. Flying with your imagination. Moshe Offer wants us to all fly with our imagination, and he's going to create this virtual world uh, in our mind uh, that uh, we will be able to fly with our imagination. Absolutely fascinating. We're going to take a break for some messages and come back a little bit more uh, on this topic. And, and also, I want to ask you a little bit about your background in technology, sir, and maybe ask you a little bit about what dark matter is, which is another theory that uh, you've been associated with. This is an interesting conversation with uh, Moshe Offer, author, who is the inventor behind a patent that is converting brain nerve data into computer format. And he wants to build a technology company based on it. Stay with us, everyone. Really interesting. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. As I said earlier in the show, if you followed me, you know that I really um, enjoy meeting fascinating people, inventors that have got interesting technology. And it comes from, uh, you know, my background uh, where I've been involved in the pharmaceutical business and the medical device business, uh, as well as numerous other businesses. And, and I've been astounded in my career at how brilliant some people are and, and some of the unbelievable ideas that they can come up with that end up having uh, incredible practical uh, um, applicability in our lives and can make interesting companies and make a lot of money and have a really positive impact on our society. Moshe uh, uh, Offer is our guest tonight, uh, and he has developed a patent on Irv nerve, eye nerve data conversion into a computer format, image manipulation, and transmission back into the brain, a simple solution to a very complex brain-eye uh, uh, interaction. But you've also had some other interesting uh, um experiences, sir. Uh, one of the things that uh, you uh, were the inventor of was something called the dark matter theory that states that all is created from one particle, the dark matter. What the heck is that? Please explain. The, our scientists have created so many ideas based on numerous number of particles. There are so many theories, each one is great, but nothing is connected together. And I thought about it for about 40 years since the first time I heard about the E equals to MC squared, which I was always wondering why the C squared between particle mass and energy. So I found out how to create everything from one particle, one particle that has no, uh, 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 no mass, no energy, nothing, as long as it doesn't move. But if you think about it in three dimensions, nothing works. Once you go to more dimensions, you can go and, and, and move everything and just by the movements, from fourth dimension to, to the world of three dimensions, you can create atoms, you can create protons, you can, can create gravity, you can create everything as one solution to everything. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find the simple words to explain it. So, so tell me, what is dark matter? Dark matter is one particle that has no attribute. It's the only particle. Once propagation starts, it gets its mass, it gets gravity, it gets everything uh, inside. And I can explain the relativity theory with a very, very, very simple mathematics, Pythagoras, that's all. And I can show that everything moves at the speed of light, it's just that when you move from one place to another, your position is different. That's all. And, 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 and it is so simple, unbelievably simple. And uh, can I be terribly honest? Yes. Real honest? 
one of the reasons at the beginning I developed the I patent was to draw attention to the to these uh, theories. These theories will give us the ability uh, to instead of move physically to move with our imagination. That means instead of using the big firecracker that uh, Elon Musk is using in order to go to Mars, we'll be able to move our imagination to Mars and still be here without the danger, without spending so much energy. And, and now it, it's beginning to all come together. But if we're using our imagination to move to Mars, we're not actually in Mars. We are. It's, it's only in our imagination. Just like your cockpit example, we're not actually in the cockpit of the airplane. We just are imagining that we're in the cockpit of the airplane. We're not Correct. actually pressing that button. We're just imagining that we're pressing the button. But what's the difference? If I come with the imagination to your place in Toronto, you're not in Toronto, you're near Toronto, if I'm not mistaken, then what's the difference if I sit there and talk? There wouldn't be any difference. I don't have to drive a car. I don't have to go into a plane. That's far-fetched. That's the, the uh, 10 steps from now. But that's would be getting everything together. Okay, and so I used to be a fan of Star Trek. And uh, did you ever watch the, the show Star Trek? Of course. Who didn't? Okay, thank you. And, and they had this room that you could go into in uh, the spaceship uh, Enterprise. And... And it would turn into a garden. It would turn into a city. It would turn into to something. So it was, it was, the recreation of a different world. Within a room in the Starship Enterprise, um, is that what you're talking about? In a way, first of all, you don't need a star, a starship, because a starship to go from here to Mars will take so long that it is unbelievable. You wouldn't be able to supply it. So I don't think you need these. I don't think those aliens that we're always talking can travel uh, with these ships. I think some of the ideas I was influenced in high school from the book Dune, if you remember it. I do. Yeah. So it's how did they fly in a totally different way? And I think we can do it without physically moving. We don't need to move. So the Starship Enterprise had a transformer that would uh, somehow break down all the molecules and, uh, and ship it somewhere else and then recreate all the molecules and you had actually moved. That you don't think we need to do. A, no, we still have to move things around, but basically, no. I, I know it's become crazier, but I, I have, I, I've worked a lot and, and I'm coming from two directions, one from the brain and one from physics. And I, 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 my idea eventually is to connect all of this together. Have you seen the movies, the Avatar movies? Yes. So there you're taking your thoughts, I guess, your soul, your being, and putting it into another entity in another world. Is that imagination or is that actually moving? Well, first of all, it is a movie. And you're asking me a very difficult question about the avatar. Technically, you wouldn't need on the other side a physical entity. But what you're telling and... me is you could use your technology to put me into an avatar world where I could actually believe I was in the avatar world. Well, let's make it this way. The theory, yes. The technology, not yet. We will have to take the theory and turn it into technology to make everything work. But the first step is to read the imagination. If we can read the imagination and manipulate it, that's the first step to doing th these things. 
how do you read imagination? Well, the imagination in the brain passes from one part of the brain, and please don't ask me all the names of the brain. I always forget them. In the opposite direction that your eyesight is coming. It's like a highway. And it comes, that, that that's not my invention. That's not mine. These are other people who wrote it. And since it's coming on a transport, which is normally the nerve system, it comes to the brain from somewhere else in the brain, it comes to the virtual cortex. So we can tap in on the entrance and see it. And then we can decide to send other data into the brain instead of the imagination coming from the brain. So, you know, all of us dream, I guess. And, and, and I woke up in the middle of the night last night and I had this unbelievable, realistic um, view of me negotiating the uh, the right to build a hospital in a suburb of Toronto. It's a stupid uh, thing, but but I could see myself actually in the room. I could hear myself making the uh, the arguments on why they should be building this hospital. Could you actually capture that imagination, that dream imagination, and turn it into something that I th thought would be real? Yes. And everything starts with the imagination. The imagination is what controls us because it's not us. And this is not my theories. This you can read in other books. Uh, uh, if you want something, it leads to frustration. But if you imagine yourself doing it, then you, your brain will facilitate you to doing it. As long as it's within the range of possible things. I don't mean that... Uh, uh, some crazy person uh, imagines uh, horrible things. But everything starts with the imagination. You want to build a hospital, you see it in your imagination. Once you see it in your imagination, your brain works in order to facilitate it. Now, this is not my theories. This is something I've learned because I've learned how to do self-hypnosis. So... That's the way how you do it. First of all, you see yourself. You want to be a CEO? You dream yourself as a CEO, and then you become a CEO. You dream yourself as a nothing, you'll be a nothing. But then what psychologists do, they try to make you imagine yourself doing things and being there. Now, all of this, again, is not mine. All I, I want to do is facilitate changing this imagination in order for you to be able to build things that in the first place you might not believe in you being able to do. So you're you're actually making the imagination stronger. Correct. The, this is actually the 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 language of the brain. Now, please, there are two things. One is flying with the imagination and one controlling the imagination. Two things. For controlling, we will have, we have the technology. Whether they approve the patent or not, we have the technology. They will approve the patent. That, uh, you have a patent to control the imagination. How do you control the imagination? Same way as I, I do with the eyesight. It's the same technology exactly. Imagination comes from the part of the brain that creates the imagination. It goes to the brain. We don't know exactly where it, it's created, but we know where it's coming from. It comes to the virtual cortex. You tap in there, you bring it to the computer, you manipulate it the way you want it, and then you send it to the brain. You want to see it, you put a, a, a computer screen and you see it. So if you tap into this, uh, this, this nerve that you say is where the, the imagination goes to and put it uh, toward a computer, you could actually show in the computer my dream, my imagination? Yeah. Correct. And then how do you control it? By you, you can can you can you take out of my imagination the hospital and change it to a to a resort or a hotel or something? Yes. So you can change my thinking. Correct. That's scary. <sighs> uh, first of all, our world is scary. And I prefer this technology to be public and 
for people like you to be able to talk about it and the regulator to regulate it rather than somebody invent it in a dark room and does horrible things with it. If you understand what I'm saying, it will come out one day. If it's not me, somebody else will do it. But if I put it in public as a patent and you talk about it, then people will be able to regulate it. You're, you're talking about very thought control, imagination Correct. control. Correct. And you do this by way of an implantable device or At the moment, glasses? at the beginning, it will be implantable devices. Later on, I believe we'll be able to do it differently, but this is not software. These are hardware devices. Hardware devices, it, it doesn't matter what hardware device you do, I have the software. So if it's implantable or not implantable, it's the same software. Your your company is in New York, I understand? Correct. And uh, and how long have you been working on this? Uh, sorry? How long have you been working on this idea, this patent? The patent is, I think, 2021. I wrote the provisional, if I'm not mistaken. And you partnered up it, with uh, someone who's your VP of business development, I understand? Rona Morris, I've been working with her for 20 years. She's Canadian, by the way. Yeah. She's from Montreal originally. She's now in Israel, uh, English mother tongue. And uh, she's the one who told me, uh, invent something that uh, with the eye, that is not, you don't have to implant something in order to transmit to the brain. Uh, so I did it. And you say you've been working with her for 20 years uh, in all these different technology companies? In one technology company, Active Point, we've been working with many huge American corporations on very sophisticated B2B systems, which have got nothing to do with it. No, but I'd you know her her background sounds interesting. I'd love to meet her sometime because you say that she started as a receptionist and ended up being the chairperson of the company. Correct. It's got to be a pretty impressive uh, lady that can go from receptionist to chairperson. Correct. I wouldn't work with somebody who's not impressive. I've found that a lot of people need to form teams between the inventor and the business development person. Has that partnership been critically important to you too? It's imperative because at a certain point, we'll have to talk to VPs of large companies. At a certain point, we'll have to move teams. Uh, she's capable of doing it. She's a very capable lady. Impressive. Uh, we're going to take a break uh, for a final message and come back with some concluding comments with uh, uh, Moshe Offer in just two minutes. Stay with us, everybody. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. I'm chatting tonight with Moshe Offer. He is the inventor behind a fascinating patent that converts brain nerve data into computer format. And, and it really creates a virtual reality uh, for our eyes. He wants to create this uh, uh, brain eye nerve data. Uh, he can take uh, data that comes from our brain, uh, our imagination, to a computer, manipulate it, and send it back and recreate a different imagination, a different reality for us. He uses the example of a cockpit in an airplane where we could be sitting at our desk and seeing that we are actually in the cockpit of the airplane. We could actually push this imaginary button that we can see in front of us. The computer will realize that we're pushing this button and, um, and we'll take action. Um, we could recreate what we see at the windows and we could actually fly. Um, it sounds sort of like uh, that Starship Enterprise where we went into the, I can't remember, it was a certain deck. I can't remember what they called that deck, but we went onto that deck and we were all of a sudden able to, to travel around the world and go back to earth, go to a different world, go to a garden, go to a, go to a city, go wherever. And, uh, and, and it was created by our imagination. Um, 
And he says that we could travel effectively to Mars with our imagination and really see Mars rather than actually having to travel in reality, which will take a far longer time to do. Trying to create this company out of a patent, um, trying to raise the money to uh, turn the idea into reality, and then ultimately have an impact on society. Really interesting, Moshe. Thank you so much for uh, joining us and sharing us, uh, sharing with us your 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 dream, your imagination that's turning into reality. You told me in what you wrote me before the show that your motto is that innovation achieves goals, and that that has always brought you success. Innovation Correct. achieves goals. Where do ideas come from? Where does innovation come from? Can I be really honest? Please do. I don't know. It comes. Uh, it's the way our brain works. We invent things, and I cannot explain how everything came together into the mind all of a sudden. But it does come all of a sudden. And then when you have the idea, the only thing is actually three things. Tenacity, tenacity, tenacity. Now that what will bring the success of this company and these ideas. So I, I, I agree with you, but I also want to amend it if I could, because I think you also mentioned this uh, when you talked about your partnership and how critical and imperative, I think was the word you used for your partnership. I think that ideas come from imagination. And I think that you can turn it into innovation when you form into a partnership with someone who brings other skill sets uh, to you, as you've said, it's imperative. And then to get it actually to market, to do something with it, it takes that tenacity. Uh, so I think it's it's a couple of different things. Um, and a lot of people come up with good ideas that don't go anywhere because they they never don't have the tenacity and they don't realize that they need some help in taking it from idea to, uh, to innovation. Um, and at least that's what I think based on my experience. Moshe, really, really enjoyable chatting with you. I hope uh, once uh, you develop this uh, idea, this imagination, this innovation, this company further, this technology, you uh, check back in with us and tell us a little bit more. Thank you very much. And I promise to do just that. Well, that's our show for tonight, everybody. You know what? There are lots of fascinating, interesting people that are coming up with incredible ideas in this world. And I want to help you meet some of them. And that's one of my objectives with this show. Thanks for joining us, Moshe. That's the Brian Crumby Radio Hour on Saga 960. I remind you I'm on 6 o'clock every night, Monday through Friday on 960 a.m., uh, you can stream me online even from New York or Israel, sir, at www.saga960am.ca. Or you could actually imagine that we're in the studio together doing the show side by side. Wouldn't that be fascinating? Yes, it would. Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us.